So one year ago, I was still using Evernote, who has a very limited structure with stacks, notebooks, and notes. So when I started using Notion, I was amazed by the possibility of having pages within pages within pages with unlimited hierarchy. But this soon started to get a little bit in the way of getting structured and even to know where I was within my workspace. It was a little bit of a mess. So in this video, I'm going to share the main idea that has helped me bring all my workspace into some order. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel, founder of the Notion Academy. And on this channel, we use Notion and other tools and strategies to free up our time and gain control over our lives. So the idea that has helped me the most was to create what I call an HQ page or headquarters page. So here in my Notion, we can see how this page looks like. But before we start to get deep into what I store here, let me tell you why this page is important for me. So first of all, it makes navigation so much easier because here on the breadcrumbs, wherever we go, we can always make sure that it's very easy to go back to our homepage. So like this, we will never get lost. So it's as easy as hitting here and we will go back to our HQ page. The second reason is that it's much more eye-pleasing to see all of these with categories, colors and everything, rather than just having everything here under a toggle because here we cannot make any categories, we cannot put photos. So it's a much more beautiful way to see our data. And of course, as I said before, in this HQ page, we can also have different categories that can, for a structured brain like me, can help me navigate it much better. So I'm going to show you a little bit around of what I store in this HQ page, because maybe this can spark some new ideas that you can implement into your own or even to start creating your own page. So first of all, and what is the, the backbone of my whole system is here in the backlog. Here we will find the toggles of the main core databases that I use throughout my entire system. I never come here, that's why it's the backlog. This is just to store all the main databases that I use and then throughout my whole system I'm just going to be creating linked database to bring up the different kinds of data that I need for a certain context. And then for inputting the data to those databases I also have input pages that I just use for that sole purpose. So as you can see I never touch these databases. I always access them from anywhere else. Then let's go back to our HQ page and here we have what I call the control center. This control center is one of these databases that is just for visualizing different kinds of data. So here I am showing the main data from my pillars and my outcomes database that is going to show me all the ongoing stuff that I have. So if you want a little bit more context of how the real system works, I'm going to link it here my video of the live system that is going to walk you through all these pillars, goals and outcomes and tasks databases. Next, we go back to our HQ is the knowledge hub in the growth category. This is where I store everything that is related to my knowledge management. So here I separate it into general notes, online courses, books, media and each of them has a different properties. It's all the books, all the media articles and then the knowledge topics that I use to link it to the different informational sources. If you're also interested to know on how I process my articles, I also have a system for that that I'm also going to be linking over here so you can check it out if you're interested. Next up is going to be this main part that I have where I store all my dashboards. These dashboards, I like to make them very simple and I'm going to show each of them to you because I'm sure that they, they will spark ideas to you. So first of all is my focus dashboard. This is the page that I use daily and that tells me what I need to do every day because remember from another videos, during my weekly review, I plan my upcoming week and then each day I just have to come here and wait for this view to tell me what I need to get done. I also have here a link to my daily pages 
into my habit tracker. Then let's go back to the HQ. Next is the plan dashboard. That this is basically these two views in which I'm just showing all the active tasks that I have, so the pending tasks, and the calendar. So it's gonna be very easy for me just to drag and drop tasks from the left to the right. So for example, if I'm in the middle of the week and I find that I need to change the plan from what I have scheduled, I can come here and easily change the plan. I can remove some tasks, I can add new ones. So it's, it's a very useful view. Now, if we go back, we come here to the content machine. This is the dashboard that I use to plan these YouTube videos. So for example, this is the YouTube video that I'm recording right now. And this is all my future scheduled videos. I also have here the video tasks, B-roll shots, the newsletter that I'm running. Next up is my reviews page. This page I use every time I need to do a review. This can be a weekly review, monthly review, or yearly review. So this is just displaying the current week, month, or year. So it's easier for me to access it. Next up, is the knowledge review page. I have touched upon this page in, in my other videos, but here I can find everything that is pending for me to process. Here I have a couple of books that if you're interested in knowing how I process book notes, I just made a video recently in which I covered that, so I'm also going to link it over here. Then how all my notes that I still need to process, all the articles, and the old articles. Now, if we go back, we have this last one, and this is just for showing my habits data. Here I have the aggregation of all my weeks with this visual representation, and this is my lifetime values. If you're interested in knowing how I track my habits, I'm gonna leave a link over here in which I show what for me is the best habit tracker ever built in Notion. So that is it, this is my main dashboards that I use at least once per week. The next page I want to show you is one page that is very easy to set up because it's mainly images and tweet embeds. And that for me is very important, which is the wall of love. Over here, I can find all the moments that I want to remember in the future, such as the first consultation client that I have related to Notion, what my first two months in YouTube look like, the first time that I sold a course through Twitter DMs, all my subscriber count in the hundreds, 100, 200, 3, 4, 5. So I can see that the growth is growing much more rapidly over time. So I greatly encourage everyone to have their own wall of love because it's very encouraging to come back here and see where you were certain months ago and how you have changed. As Dan Sullivan said, we have to measure the gain and not the gap. So instead of measuring ourselves against other people or the ideal image, we have to measure ourselves with our past self. And I think this page is greatly going to help me to achieve that. Now let's go back to the HQ. Here I have a page for food recipes that is just basically a database in which I sort them by the type of food and that I can easily come back whenever I forgot how to do a recipe. So it's very simple. Next one is the trips. I haven't used this in the past year, but it's a very interesting page because here I have one page in which I show myself the percentage of the world that I have visited. So every time that I visit a new country, I'm gonna check it in this database and automatically I'm going to see here how this percentage starts to grow and the percentage of the world that I still have yet to explore. By the way, I also use this, every of these pages, I use them to plan my trips. I will make a template for trip planning in the future, but so far, this is still in the to-do list. Now, we go back to the HQ. Now, in, in order to replace Evernote, because we know that Evernote is very good for storing documents, because it has a built-in scanner, you can visualize the documents from within Evernote. This was one of the features that I really missed, but I think I have more or less solved it in Notion 
with this scan documents page. So in this page, I have all the documents. So for inputting data into this database, what I do is I use the Android app Cam Scanner. And once I scan the documents over there, I'm going to share those PDFs into this database. So this has replaced Evernote for me. I just need an extra app to scan the documents. Now going back to the HQ, I have this other database, which is everything that I need for future reference. So we can take this database as storage only that I may never use it, but it's there just in case I need it. In here, there is all sorts of things such as how our dream house will look like, photos of myself with a new haircut so I can show it whenever I go to the hairdresser, to the hairdresser, my Mac phones, my some medical insurance that I may get. So all these things is just things that I may use in the future. So it's just like an kind of an archive. So let's go back to the HQ. And then to finish, I have this old page where I store everything that I had in my Evernote that doesn't make sense to even have it in any other page that I'm never going to use that maybe it was from my previous job, but I still want to keep it because from time to time, I just like to, to come over here and reminiscence how my life was when I was working in corporate world. So that is it. This is the basis of what I store in my HQ page. As you can see, I have some other pages. So if you're interested that maybe in future videos, I go a little bit farther in any of them, just reply in the comments and I will make a video specific about that page in particular, about how it works and how I use it, etc. So now I will want to, to give you some tips on how you can create your own HQ page. First, you will have to watch your life with a little bit of perspective from upside and see how you can categorize the different parts of it. Maybe you can even start with my categories with work, growth, home life, and archive, but experiment and try to keep the categories to the minimum to create less chaos. Then within each category, try to create subcategories. By the way, you can do this exercise on paper first, brainstorm, and then you can start creating the pages inside of Notion. So once you have your categories and your subcategories, as I said, create the pages and run with them. Just start using them. Time will say if you need to tweak it, if you need to separate a subcategory into two, if you need to join two into one. Time will say the best way to test a system is by using it. In the beginning, you will need to tweak it several times, but you will reach a point in which your system will be almost permanent. For example, right now, I barely touch mine. So if you feel that your Notion system still tends to get messy, I also created a video about that in which I teach you how to avoid that from happening. And I will link the video over here so you can go check it out. So I hope this video was useful because for me, this is the backbone of my system. And as always, hasta la próxima.